Good morning, hacksters. It's my favorite day of the week. Tuesday, we get to talk to someone who's doing amazing stuff with hardware. And this week's guest is truly incredible. Pete Warden, you've done everything, but you've co-created TensorFlow. You're the founder of Useful Sensors, which we're going to dig into a lot with a couple of live hardware demos. And uh, you've written books about open data science uh, tools and all kinds of stuff that we're, we're going to get into. But that's sort of like my brief impression of you. Good morning, Pete. How's it going? Okay, thanks so much, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. We are so excited to, uh, I'm so excited to chat with you because there's, as I was like researching this, there's just more and more and more stuff that keeps coming up. So, uh, in fact, David Groom chimes in and Tiny ML. <laughs> Would you like hey, to David. tell us? <laughs> what's up, David? Uh, yeah, tell us about Tiny ML. What's the deal with Tiny ML? Yeah, um, so the origin story um, goes back to me joining Google back in 2014. Um, and I had a startup that was doing machine learning on phones. Um, and I was feeling pretty uh, pleased with ourselves that we managed to like squeeze machine learning models down into like a megabyte. I thought that was pretty small. Um, and then I met Raziel Alvarez, who, um, apologies to everyone's phone when they go off, um, but he, he ran the OK Google um, team that was doing the on-device, uh, like, hot wake word detection, listening out on a uh, little DSP in your phone for somebody saying the OKG uh, wake word. Uh, we have to call that in meetings at Google so that everyone's mm -hmm. phone doesn't go off. Um, and it's like spelling was, out W A L K for our dogs so they don't freak exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You sort of have to whisper so the phones don't hear you. Um, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. We've got a 30 kilobyte model uh, that we're using for the wake word detection. And that wow. just, yeah, that just sent my mind racing because I was like, wow, if you can use deep learning in that smaller size, in that sort of constrained uh, environment. I wonder what other problems you can solve. Mm. Um, and that was really the the starting point was, you know, that was when I TensorFlow was just getting started. Um, we got TensorFlow running on phones. And then um, I actually uh, started to see, hey, can we actually get TensorFlow running on Arduino, um, all of these microcontrollers and uh, DSPs and all of these embedded systems. And that's really where TensorFlow Lite Micro, um, a little framework that fits within 20 kilobytes and runs on uh, bare metal. Um, that's where that all came from. That's ridiculous. Was that a uh, Jetpack that you were talking about? Jetpack was the startup. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, is that sort of how you got, uh, into Google? You ended up getting, being acquired by them in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, we had an app that was not super successful, <laughs> but we had actually been doing deep learning um, to do image recognition. And this was, you know, back in 2012, 2013, when wow. that was just starting to take off. So. Ooh, speaking of image recognition, let's chat about uh, a couple of the things that you've built recently, because one of them is this tiny code reader. Um, and I think you have a demo to show us later on, but we've got tiny code reader, uh, just to give people a quick overview of some of the other things that you've got going on. There's also uh, useful sensors is your company. As we mentioned, there's the person sensor, which detects nearby faces and returns information about them. And I love the projects that are going on here. Uh, and then there's one other big one that we're going to chat about later, but yeah. Um, so what happened after, uh, how did you get into starting useful sensors? Let's just go through the whole story first. Yeah. So, um, it kind of leads on from the tiny ML, uh, stuff I was doing. I was working on, um, trying to, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to do is be able to look at a light or a lamp or something and just say on and have it come on mm. like it feels like that should just work um and there's a lot of other things that if you can do um all use all of these new capabilities of machine learning and ai we should be able to build um objects that you can interact with in a similar way to the way you interact with people like that's kind of the starting point mm. um and so 
I would go to like light switch manufacturers or people who make microwaves or cars or whatever it was, and I'd tell them all about this wonderful open source framework, you know, TensorFlow Lite Micro that they could just pick up and use, and there's a book and there's conferences and there's all of this, um, all of these examples, uh, because I wanted them to build these kinds of things. Um, and at the end of most of those conversations, they just kind of be looking at me and say, look, we, we don't have a machine learning team. Uh, you know, we barely have a software engineering team. Um, can you just give us something that gives us a voice interface? Or can you just give us something that helps us tell when somebody sits down in front of the TV? Um, and so after hearing that for long enough, um, I decided to see if we could build some modules where people could just get some of these standard capabilities or what should be standard capabilities off the shelf and just plug them into their projects. Mm. Uh, and it seems like you've achieved this, at least with the uh, AI in a box, which is something that's crowdfunding on crowd supply right now. Yeah, um, and uh, I don't know, whenever you're ready, I'm happy to give you a demo. Yes, please. OK. <laughs> I, apologies if anybody gets seasick, because I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be tilting uh, my uh, my screen so that you can actually see the uh, see the display. Uh, and everything's falling off my desk here. So I'll we'll swap to the uh, view of the, the crowd supply. Oh, yes. OK, well, hopefully um, now my webcam should be able to, um, if you switch back. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, you can hopefully ah. see that it's actually doing live transcription of what I'm saying. And uh, this is one of the core capabilities of this um, this AI box, um, you can see that there's a little, uh, just a little, um, you know, credit card sized uh, box that's using a rock chip board. Um, and uh, what it's actually doing is running speech to text uh, on uh, live audio. Um, and traditionally, this is something that's been uh, very hard to do, but we've been able to build on top of the work that OpenAI has been doing for their Whisper model um, to uh, actually build this open source completely on device. There's no network connection at all. Um, running uh, all of this uh, speech to text work. Um, and as well as just doing the basic speech to text, uh, I just get the speakers. Uh, in range. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this. If I say, go into chatty mode, huh. and then I say, are you going to destroy humanity? <laughs> nice. That sounds a bit scary. That sounds a bit scary. I really appreciate that you can turn it off. <laughs> Tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. Oh, yes. Uh, I wonder if you can move the speaker any closer, because I don't. Really yeah, know. I can't actually. Oh, I I think I, yeah. I think the speaker I know how is, that goes. Yeah. OK, why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. So <laughs> the model is clearly a, uh, it's clearly a dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, this, I, th I think you showed the crowdfunding page. The idea with this is that um, not only are you able to do uh, transcriptions, you're able to talk to a large language model 
um, running again completely locally on the device. Um, we also, I haven't got it demonstrated here, but we have um, translation between different languages. Um, yeah, so actually being able to um, talk in English and get French captions or have a conversation uh, between a Mandarin speaker and an English speaker. Um, we have some uh, uh, videos of uh, us um, doing that, and it's uh, that's that's really fun. Um, and this is all on a on an Ubuntu image that you can uh, SSH into um, and start building your own applications on top of this stuff. Um, so, uh, and another way that you could also include it in your projects is we're able to send the transcription output over a USB cable as if the box was a keyboard. So you effectively have wow. a voice keyboard. So I'm really hoping to see some cool like art projects or, you know, things that where you just plug that into a Raspberry Pi and then you just use the speech um, that's, you know, the, the text input that's coming out of that voice keyboard. So yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this and I hope people get a chance to check it out. Yeah, I think about um, privacy a lot and obviously you do as well. One of my thoughts is that, you know, someone could leave this in a room with someone else and transcribe what they're saying. But honestly, that's like something that, you know, if you think about it for a moment, people can already do that with just leaving a microphone somewhere. So like, and this is like a much more difficult to miss kind of uh, project. So I feel like that's, you know, not necessarily anything new in terms of privacy, but tell us a bit, you, you emphasize that this stuff is air gapped, that it runs on device, that it doesn't require an internet connection. You don't have to send it anywhere you can SSH in, but I'm assuming you could also disable that. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and really like uh, this comes back to another experience, another common conversation I had at Google, which was especially when people found out I was doing machine learning, which helped with the speech side, they would tell me, um, hey, I was just talking about Tunisia to a friend. And then the next day I oh. started getting all of these ads for holidays in Tunisia. Like, what the hell, Pete, are you spying on me? <laughs> um, yeah. And I was able to say, hand on my heart, no, um, but I can't prove it. Mm. So a lot of the work that we're doing is around trying to build systems that not only have privacy built in, but that people can actually check our work, um, you know, so you don't have to just trust some random tech company. Um, you can actually uh, have third parties audit it. Individuals can kind of, you know, check out the code um, and really just, you know, you shouldn't have to have an internet connection to use a voice interface. Truth. Uh, I love how two of these main data points on your values for user sen uh, for useful sensors are about uh, security and and your own choice about what you choose and what you don't choose. It's good. And something related to your point about you know these being used to spy on people. One thing I'm very I think is very important is to have good labeling um, mm. about you know if something has a microphone or a camera in it, there should be a label on it that says so. <laughs> You know, that's the starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love that it says AI in a box in big letters on it. You know exactly what it is when you see it. Does that help with, I, you know, as someone who travels with technology, that makes me feel like maybe it's something to do with uh, a design choice around airports. <laughs> I don't know. <Yeah. laughs> I, I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, my bags are just full of, well, let me show you, like, this is one of the bags that I carry through air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I've actually been very lucky. I have not been, um, I think it's so ridiculous, the amount of stuff that I carry through that nobody thinks that I can be doing anything that, you know, nefarious because it's mm. so, you know, I'm just festooned in cables and things. So. <laughs> Yeah, and customs as well. I think that, you know, some people take to designing transparent cases just so that they don't get like, open yeah. up the message, but if they can just look it up, yeah. We have a question from David. Uh, since it's all offline, how are updates delivered or is that perhaps not the point? My perception is that you can sort of turn that on and off, but. 
Yeah, and um, right now we're delivering um, uh, updates as SD cards oh. <laughs> that people can, um, you know, burn a new SD card and plug it into the box. Um, I quite like the idea of having SD cards that you can take out of the box as well so that, you know, you can have the only storage that's associated with this device kind of tucked away in your wallet. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a long-term solution, um, but I am also hoping that if we design this well, um, you know, it's not like the English transcription should hopefully need a lot of updates. Um, obviously, there'll be improvements with things like, uh, you know, maybe new languages for the translation. Um, and, but I'm sort of hoping that it were, you know, it works out of the box, doesn't require any network connections, will keep working for as long as the hardware remains um, running, uh, you know, which is a big deal for a lot of projects and things like smart homes, where I've been, you know, a lot of people have been burned by, oh, our company's folded, so we're shutting down the servers. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, we're we're taking quite a weird, um, an unusual approach to updates in that we're um, we're really trying to say, hey, this is air gap, this is not networked. We don't want the extra attack surface that having updates over the air would actually open up. So let's see if we can build something that does a good enough job out of the box that um, you don't, you know, the need for updates isn't urgent. Absolutely. And uh, you've got this, uh, I'm trying to open this GitHub page for it. Here we go, ANR box documentation. Yes. Uh, so linked at the bottom of the crowd supply page, you've got support and documentation, and then you go to this GitHub page and, and move this so we can see a little bit more. But yeah, uh, all this documentation, but again, you don't have to rely on that. I'm curious about like, you know, with uh, building hardware or any product, there's always a question of uh, user uh, friendliness, <laughs> uh, yes. approachability. And, you know, I'm curious the, about the balance between that and tweakability, like how, uh, obviously you have this uh, option where you can even translate, uh, like caption English and French and stuff like that. Uh, so I assume there's some amount of tweakability and since it's in, on GitHub and things like that, you've got plenty of options, but uh, are you going to have pre-built uh, multiple versions of this that you can add uh, to the to the box, or is it going to be mostly like you get sort of one flavor and then you're free to tweak it however you want? Or uh, yeah, and actually, if you go to the useful sensors org on GitHub, um, oh. there's yeah. So go up there, and then there's another project that useful transformers um, actually has a lot of the code uh, ah. for running Whisper on this board. Um, so this this might because the the documentation is fairly sparse at the moment but if you have a rock board uh like a rock 5a or 5b um you can actually uh run this speech to text without having to wait for the um uh you know for ordering um though obviously i still appreciate your support on the crowd supply um oh wow yeah. So uh, yeah, there's uh, the the user experience and the UI. Uh, we're still figuring out. Um, as you probably saw there, I used a, um, a keyword by saying, "Hey, go into chatty mode." That right. put into the. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to maybe use something like that to help control um, things like the translation. You know, you could say, "Hey." start translating translating English into French, mm. uh, for example. But I don't know how, like, a big question is how discoverable that's actually going to be. Um, you know, we may end up, we're going to have buttons and things on the final product. So we'll probably also have a way of just kind of, you know, selecting from a menu at least. For sure. We've got some positive feedback about the firmware updating system. I also think that's awesome. Uh, and a little story from David about hackathon <laughs> 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 airport experiences. Uh, you know, I've My gotten point. busted. Huh? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I've gotten busted for Kinder Eggs in the past, but been let through. Oh, the <laughs> dangerous <laughs> stuff. Uh, My, I don't uh, like it. 
my mom <laughs> had uh, bought a Christmas fruit cake to me one year, and uh, she got uh, you know the. I think the security people said, "Yeah, it's the exact same density as plastic explosive." <laughs> <Woo>! Wow! <laughs> and I, I love, I love that cake. So. <laughs> I didn't. One could chat about other comparisons to be made between the two, perhaps. But yeah, yes. <laughs> I won't insult your mom. Um, so we've got yeah. So so the work that you're doing now with Whisper on the AI in a box uh, reminds me of previous uh, work that you've done with Speech Cat, this uh, speech recognition tool to convert audio to text transcripts for Linux and a Raspberry Pi. Is this sort of like um, did you like start with this and then move to Whisper, or is Whisper sort of a, an evolution of this? I never know how much uh, uh, involvement you had in like the creation of the deep tools that you're using, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no this this was my uh, this was my first attempt um, at trying to do a general. I think having speech to text as just a capability. <laughs> yes, I, I did. I, I did enjoy. Yes, uh, putting that. <laughs> <together>. <laughs> um, ha, like I feel like it should be something like just having a keyboard driver or a mouse driver or something. You should be able to do um, audio to text as just kind of something you grab off the shelf. So this was one of my first attempts using uh, Cocky's uh, great. Um, work that they'd been doing around open source um uh models um mm. then uh in i think it was in september of 2022 i think i did this in january um open ai came out with their whisper model and it's pretty amazing like it's a massive step up in quality um as well as capability um now it doesn't run real time you can't run it streaming you can only run it in batch mode so oh. feeding in like you know 30 seconds at a time um there are some uh you know some other projects i think like whisper mic uh, might be one um that sort of explore trying to make this more real time but i really wanted to go the whole way and have something that was you know hopefully down to you know sub second responsiveness uh, responsiveness if possible um and so the combination of uh you know the team here at useful sensors um especially my co-founder manjanath um put together that useful transformers library that i showed you earlier um and that's able to use the npu on the neural processing unit the uh, machine learning accelerator that's on this rock chip board to actually run whisper much faster than you know more than twice as fast as the closest um you know alternative that we found so being able to get to that level of real-time performance i think is really important for anything like an interface or even just watching transcriptions show up you don't want a, a big lag because then it just doesn't feel right absolutely and uh just when I was looking through your GitHub earlier, I found so many interesting things. I think this is another one that could be useful for people. Uh, specifically, mm -hmm. myself, I'm trying to occasionally build robots that uh, respond to um, respond to training words. And in order to create that model, sometimes you need to create your own data set with yourself saying the same thing over and over a <laughs> million times. <laughs> so I'm sure you're very aware. Uh, and so this seems very useful for people like me who are trying to make a robot respond to a custom word that might not be in one of the standard data sets like its name for example exactly and that's um i built this when i was putting together the uh google speech commands data set um because i couldn't find a good data set to use for machine learning training I wanted something that was almost like um, MNIST, uh, but for audio. Um, mm -hmm. And so I ended up putting together, but in order to put together this collection, I think we ended up with maybe 200,000 utterances in, in the end. Um, I needed to have an app that did exactly what you said um, around uh, being able to capture all of these um, 
making it easy for you to say the same word over and over again yeah. to get it captured. Um, so that's uh, that's what I ended up open sourcing was the code that we would I was using internally to kind of gather this data set. So it's it's been oh, nice cool. to see it's it's had a long afterlife. It's like actually seems to have been you know useful for a bunch of people. Thankfully, so that's been nice. nice. To see. Is this the data set that you're talking about here? This uh... it is exactly. Um, cool. So this this has sort of become a sort of default data set for a lot of people trying to test out models and things and being able to benchmark accuracy. Rad. And uh, as with many of these links, this is something that's either in our description right now or it's going to go into the description after the fact. I believe this one is already in the description. So if you uh, are curious, just scroll down and you'll be able to find this because you've created so many cool, uh, <laughs> useful tools. It's amazing. And like, you know, ah, I know I keep saying that, but it's so true. Um, so I'm curious, could you tell us a bit about the uh, the hardware inside of the AI in the box? You've actually shared a lot of it already. You were talking about the Rock Chip board, which is not one that I've been familiar with. So what, what made you choose that board specifically? So it's actually the board that's in thing. I think it's in a lot of the like banana pie and orange ah. pie. Yeah. So you if you might already have one of these kind of kicking around. It's um, what I really, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and, you know, it's great to see the Raspberry Pi 5 and things come out. Mm. But because we needed um, machine learning acceleration, uh, this rock chip board had this NPU um, that lets us run um, Whisper uh, more than twice as fast as we can on the CPU. Wow. Um, yeah so it's actually a big deal having that kind of acceleration um and because it's also used by a lot of the you know like i said banana orange pie these other um as well as uh okay do actually put out um a board and a meridroid do as well so it's it's available from a whole bunch of different um suppliers which is also nice hmm. um and yeah, it's just it's just actually been a good um, you know, especially having the accelerator. Um, it's got a uh, a lot of horsepower um, to run the kind of heavy models that we are using. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to check this out. I, as you say, I may already have yeah. a device that you has its own. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, let's check out some of the other things that you've done because we're already a half hour in and there's oh so God. much left to talk about it. Oh my gosh. So we've got this person sensor, which I have to plug now. We've got this build together. Oops, that's the wrong oh, yes. link. <laughs> Where's the, uh, I'll come up with it. Um, but there's this build together contest that we're doing together. Um, and we're really excited that you're involved. It's an accessibility tech uh, uh, contest with uh, you know, talking with uh, and working closely with people with disabilities uh, in order to make sure that people are building stuff that's actually like informed by actual needs and will actually answer people's, uh, you know, real life use cases. And uh, part of that contest is this person sensor. So could you tell us about what that is and what it does? Yeah, so part of the whole idea behind, um, you know, like I mentioned, we're trying to make it so that you can interact with everyday objects that like you can interact with people and one of the most important things uh that we do as people is we know when somebody's around <laughs> um mm. and so we're able to sort of you know react to them we also know when somebody's looking at us and so for the lamp example that i was talking about i want to be able to make eye contact with a lamp mm. and then start talking and it will know that i'm actually talking to it so really this person sensor was <clears throat> a building block for that kind of interaction um so what it does is uh it has one pin that goes high whenever there's a person around um and then it has an i squared c a quick or a stem qt um interface um where you send uh information about the metadata um 
like where people are if they're looking at the device um, and also does some simple facial recognition. Uh, so we've used this for all sorts of things like uh, fans that actually follow you around the room because they're <laughs> sort of where you are. <laughs> we've also done some Halloween stuff like the spooky eyeball. Um, I think if you go to the hack store. Yes, uh, that is a. That's that's one of my favorites. There we go. Yes. It's going to show my little admin thing here. Whoop, there we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, which builds on top of um, a, a, somebody else's project for doing the actual eyeball. Um, but I love uh, having it respond to, um, you know, people in the room. Um, and uh, there are a um, uh, bunch of other uh, projects um, using this too. Actually, one of my favorites is uh, Thomas Burns. The, oh, yeah life into an Amazon Echo device. This and is again, so cool. So cool. And it's so nice of him. Like I didn't like he he gave you can actually see the person sensor like where the nose should be. Um <laughs> and uh, it's controlling the eyes so that uh the eyes follow the person around the room. Um I I'm actually I I've I've sent uh Thomas a um an AI box as well because I'm really hoping that he'll have some fun uh building you know building another project on top of that nice um, it's, it's, this is this is one of my um one of the things i i really enjoy um he, he's got such a it, it's so theatrical i love it it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's really something special about these animatronic eyes being in there yeah and yeah. um one thing that i love about this like many people i'm a little uh you know, I want people to be careful about where they put facial recognition and how they use it. And the fact that you've created this tool that makes it very easy for people to do that offline makes me really happy because often, uh, you know, not everyone thinks about that stuff. And, or like if you even if you care about it, you don't necessarily have the time to research everything and make sure you're doing it right. So in my opinion, like any tool that makes it easier for people to do the right thing or the thoughtful thing or the privacy centric thing is in my book, definitely a win. So mad respect for that. Oh, no, thank you, Alex. <laughs> Didn't think you're gonna get mad respect this morning, did you? Yeah. <laughs> this no, is so I, cool. yeah. I, well, since since we're, I mean, I will say I've been, you know, Hackster has been a fantastic uh, community uh, for me. Um, you know, it's been so great to see, you know, most of these, a lot of these are completely, um, you know, have been created by users. Uh, you know, I've got a few of my own in there, um, but uh, it's, it's been so good to see Love what this. everybody's been doing here. Yeah. And then... Um, you know, it's it's just you know people people like you, Alex, as well, like just yeah. uh, you know driving driving the whole community and sort of you know spreading the word on all these different things. That's just been fantastic to see. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, mad respect to you too. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Thank you. I didn't expect I was going to get mad respect to get it either. Okay, we've got this one. Almost looks like it's made with like a t one of those tiny ML vision kits. Oh. Yeah. But it says note card, so that's like blues wires. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of talking to myself now. Let's oh, take no, a look. No. <laughs> uh, so we've got the build together contest. This is the thing I was trying to show earlier. Uh, the inclusive innovation challenge, which is actually open until the end of November. People can still yeah. participate in this, even if you didn't get free hardware. Like many of our contests, there was sort of a free hardware round, but you can still get hardware, and you have like a month and a half plus to submit. And there's three themes here. Um, but yeah, uh, people are using the person sensor. Have you seen any submissions so far that are using the person sensor in an interesting way for this? Um, I, I have to admit, I haven't been, um, I, I haven't been following this closely. I've been sort of, uh, Totally makes sense. Up. I usually yeah. look at it at the end of the round. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to give people a bit of a chance to <laughs> kind of, you know, get get their stuff together before I start digging in. Mm. Um, 
And now that I think about it, actually, it probably wouldn't be a great idea to give anyone a little boost before we uh, wrap up the challenge. <laughs> but so, okay. Anyway, though, uh, feel free to enter the contest. Did do? You can find the information in the description below. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I want to focus more on other things that you're doing. So we've got the person sensor we've talked about. We talked about the AI in the box, and there's another. Uh, recent um project for yours for which i believe you also have a demo uh could you yeah. tell us about the tiny code reader yeah so um here's the box eee, uh, it is I, tiny. I, 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 I didn't this is i don't know if you ever have that ever have that thing where you order something on the internet <laughs> and it's like a completely different size to what you're expecting <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought I, I kind of thought the box would be bigger, but it's it's actually kind of perfect because it's like a little, I don't know, almost like a little Sylvanian families, um, <laughs> little <laughs> little electronic component. Um, and here here it is um, actually connected to a Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W. Um, so this is uh, this is uh, a QR code reader um, you can get for seven dollars. Um, wow. from, uh, yeah, from Adafruit and SparkFun and the usual uh, places. And what uh, I'm using it for in this demo um, is I've got a Pico W, and one of the challenges with anything that's got Wi-Fi on it is, okay, how do you actually pass the password and the um, network name to a device mm. um and one of the things we've found with like when we talk to appliance manufacturers and things like that is that they're, they're you know they're smart you know connected appliances less than half of them actually get connected to wi-fi ever because it's usually such a pain to set up the app and you know to type in all of the information you need and all of that sort of stuff so the original idea was hey let's build something that um makes it really easy to use computer vision to just read in QR codes and basically pass in information to systems that don't have a keyboard. Um, so uh, what I am going to do is uh, we have a um, we have a project uh, for the Pico W that lets you sh um, uh, that lets you actually um, run this same code i'll make sure i share a link to it um, but what i'm going to do is uh, i've got this qr code for my personal hotspot uh, i've changed the password uh, in case anybody's scanning this <laughs> uh, so i'm not um but if i if i actually go to uh see if i can just share screen um and I'm going to show you this running in Thony, uh, which is the, um, let's nice. see if this, this actually works. Yep. You can see, you can see Thony here. This is just a micro Python example that's reading from, that's running on the Raspberry Pi, um, Pico, uh, or oh, the RP2040. So yeah, uh, W, um, and then reading from I squared C, uh, from the tiny code reader's I squared C address, and basically saying, hey, have you seen a QR code? And if it has, it will say, oh, does it start with the magic um, prefix? Mm -hmm. um, and if it does, um, then it says, OK, I'm going to try and connect to Wi-Fi. So I've just started this running. I'm going to uh, show the QR code to the um, uh, to this, and so I just give it a sec. Sometimes reflections, uh, ah! it picked it up. It's waiting for connection, and hopefully, give it a second. I hope the wife. I hope the hotspot didn't go to sleep. <laughs> Oh yes, the hotspot actually went to sleep because live uh, demo. Yeah, so <laughs> give it a section. Give it a second and see if it actually figures out how to reconnect. Okay, I'm gonna. <gasps> oh, I'm gonna stop and restart. This is good QA. Uh, 
yeah exactly it's like i was too busy talking not not enough definitely. <laughs> less talking <laughs> okay. more nerding exactly so let's just there we go and hopefully this time there we go Whoa! Did. Yay. I'm really trying okay. not to be too loud about this, but I love it. Yeah, I'm going to stop screen sharing before something else goes wrong there. But <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do people get their hands on this? We got, oh, I need to put my screen back on. There we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, Adafruit, uh, Spark Fun. Oh, and that's that's actually, I, I wish I'd actually had the, yep. Um, I really want to get it on uh, Pi Moroni as well. Oh yeah, uh, because, uh, and I haven't been able to. So this is this is kind of a shout out to the Pi Moroni team because we're actually using their Badger um, badge. Yeah. So you can not only scan QR codes on it, you can also actually display them. So you could have two Badger boards or badger badges <laughs> where you actually kind of exchange information just using um you know because they've got this nice uh i squared c you know they've got the same connector that we use so it's really easy to set up so yeah if anybody from who knows people at pi moroni um are listening i'd love to actually see if we can get them in stock there and see if we can do you know some uh yeah just show what a good fit the um badger uh 2040 is for um uh for this device it's so much fun i just want to i just want to let them know that we've we've really liked using their e-ink uh badge for this stuff i feel like i can hear david bouncing in his seat and he's probably gonna beat me to it we do both know uh <laughs> paul or guru of Pimeroni, and he's probably gonna beat me to it but if not we'll totally put you in touch uh paul awesome. <laughs> absolutely let me pull up the badger here because uh, i think i saw a demo with this at ces this year actually and doing live transcription actually and i almost pulled up the tab um uh just like uh where it was a, a product that they'd made so that it was like listening in on what you were doing and doing live transcription and displaying it on this as basically a, a lanyard, which I thought was brilliant right. for like trade yeah. shows, you know? Yeah. I kind of wonder if it's just using your tech. Uh... <laughs> it wasn't you though. <laughs> no. Anyway, very cool. Let's see, we're at 10.48. We've got about uh, a few minutes left. So let's do a little bit of a lightning round if you're down. Sure, let's do this. Cool. How about, uh, so first up, um, what's your favorite part of your job or your workflow when you're working on stuff? Uh, seeing this stuff being used by people, like seeing it actually end up um, out in the world. So that's where like the project hub is one of my favorite things to kind of keep refreshing, see what uh, new stuff people have done. So if anybody has new stuff um, as well, just drop me a line at pete at usefulcensors.com. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yes. What is, okay, this, this one might be a little bit longer, actually. What are you most excited about in terms of recent developments in technology or research that is happening that uh, you could see just changing the future of what you build? So really the whisper stuff by mm. OpenAI, everybody's focused on chat GPT, but having an industrial quality uh, speech to text, um, you know, module or model that you can run is just absolutely wonderful. Like it makes such a difference to the world. Um, I think that it's going to lead to a whole bunch of different um, you know uh applications over the next few years so i i i feel like it's been overshadowed by chat gpt um but being able to actually have machines understand you um the way that people can understand you i think that that's so um it's gonna have such a big impact absolutely yeah oh looking into this stuff it got me inspired um okay so i know that you've created a ton of github projects and maybe you just like brain dumb straight to github but otherwise how do you organize your thoughts are you a pen and ink kind of guy do you have like what do you do? so somebody once accused me of um thinking by coding 
Um, <laughs> which I think is actually kind of fair. Um, a lot of times when I'm trying to figure something out, uh, writing some code is sort of my way of, um, you know, oh, okay, how would this work? How can I organize my thoughts? Um, I also do, I'm still a blogger. Uh, you know, I know it's like 20 years since, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> blogging was a thing. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I love just putting stuff out on, um, on my blog when I'm thinking of stuff. Like I had this, this request for census blog post came from a friend who emailed me and asked about, Hey, why don't we have garage door sensors that just tell me when the garage door is open? Mm. Um, and I had a lot of thoughts and feelings on that. Um, <laughs> so rather than just email, you know, just email him, I thought, okay, I'll just, uh, put this into a blog post, um, since I have to do the work to put together the email anyway. Um, and so that's sort of become my, um, I, I used to use Twitter a lot more, but I, you know, I, I really, I really don't like the direction it's gone in. So mm. I've, you know, I still very, very occasionally post there, but, um, that's not my, um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel good about supporting it, I guess. <laughs> Legit. I just got to inter interject here. <laughs> As I yeah. suspected, David is right on it. You are an amazing people connector, David. Thank you so much for yeah, being thank you, in David. our lives. Oh. Uh, cool. Um, do you ever 3D print the, it looks like the, uh, the enclosure for the AI in a box looks 3D printed. It is. So. It, it is. And we actually have some, uh, the team here, um, you know, one of my, uh, you know, one of my dirty little secrets is that I can't solder. Um, yeah. And I've never actually done my own. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can, technically I can solder, but it's, it's really not pretty. Um, <laughs> and so uh, the team here um, have uh, done a fantastic job um, putting together the, uh, I'll give a shout out to William and James and Nat who have, done all of this uh, work around um, actually putting 3D printed uh, cases together. Um, they're the real hardware people. I'm, I'm, I'm secretly just a software person who kind of hangs <laughs> out with hardware people. If I may suggest one thing that would be really cool, I think, for especially the, the QR code reader and the person sensor, uh, I feel like if, if no one else creates this, I probably will, where it's like <laughs> uh, useful to have a little just template for how to interface with this kind of thing uh, or yeah. you know there may be suggested ones already like suggested holders for this but like just putting something like that on thingiverse or uh the yeah, other uh communities where people can grab the template and then like create whatever kind of attachment they want gopro is just i use that for my robots because there's all these different gopro like it's it's basically an open standard at this point and yeah. like i don't know all kinds of interesting stuff that people could put together to attach this to stuff that's a great idea. And we've, we've got the CAD files for these out as uh, step files. Um, but I'd love Ooh. to get the, the, um, uh, like the 3d printing, uh, files out there as well for some, uh, some of the little holders. Ooh, I got it. Oh yeah. Check it out on the GitHub tiny code reader docs step file. Yeah, we go. Solid. <laughs> okay. We're halfway there already. Awesome. And of course, you've got an amazing uh, developer guide. I do love, by the way, the uh, the tiny box for the tiny code reader. I think it like, because it's like as soon as you get it in the mail, you're like, wow, this really is tiny. It kind of. I know. I just I just want to kind of like pinch its little cheeks or something. It's just like it's like oh. a little sugar cube. But yeah, like I said, I didn't quite realize um, <laughs> how small it was going to be. It's it's nice because we've uh, we've actually been able to. I've like got the stock. Um, of the production run it's like sitting in one of the shelves behind me because you know a few thousand of them is just like that so oh my gosh, yeah that's amazing okay let's see uh best value tool you have quality per price and i know okay so you just said that you don't do a lot of soldering do you do uh do you have any tools that help you with just putting things together hardware wise <sighs> that could be like an adapter for usb even or like some, some yeah. weird thing that i don't know about well I have to say the whole quick STEM IQ, uh, oh, yeah. STEM IQ system has been, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's like, there were so many 
like almost anything that I'm looking at, um, even things like the micro bit, I've been able to find um, quick slash stemma QT um, adapters, um, which means I don't have to solder, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, you know, better for everyone involved, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's got on the sides, it's actually got a couple of uh, quick connectors, um, which means I can just plug in, you know, I can slot in the micro bit and then just um, attach the cables, just plug the cables in, they fit nice and snugly. And I don't have to worry about doing any, um, I like, I can't get them the wrong way around. Um, it's just been a fantastic um, time saver. I'm so glad that this has become, you know, started to become uh, standard. Yeah, and there's so many different modules. Like this is really exactly why they've created these systems. You know, there's just yeah. so many different modules, like in both the Quick Connect system and STEMI QT, which, as you mentioned, are kind of interchangeable. Uh, just like, oh, let, let's go into the peripherals here. Here we go: huh? shields, carrier boards, sensors, etc., yeah. accessory boards, and then you go into STEMI QT, and there's like, uh, yeah. here we go: just like eight bajillion things. That they've yeah. got available here magnetometers yeah good stuff i yeah. feel like this is this is really the dream for them this is exactly like people who have strong ideas who are pushing things forward and you don't even really need to know how to solder and stuff thankfully cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh last last lightning round question uh do you have any pets and if not what would you like <laughs> yes, I actually have, uh, I don't know, you, you probably won't be able to see on my, uh, but I have, yeah, so that's uh, Minpin in the foreground, uh -huh. and then Nutmeg in the background. Um, Minpin is a miniature pincher, um, uh -huh. that was his temporary name, uh, but it's stuck, and then Nutmeg is a, um, a Terrier Chihuahua mix. Um, and yeah, uh, love, love them to bits. It's, uh, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, like nutmegs often sitting next to me on the couch while I'm putting stuff together. So oh. <laughs> part of the team too. That's so lovely. So, um, we're coming to the end of our show here. I would love to ask you about what's next. So today we covered lots of ground. We talked about the uh, tiny QR code reader, tiny code reader, my bad. The QR is not in there, but it is tiny code reader, the AI in a box and the person sensor. You've got so much going on and so much coming out that crowd supply isn't even done yet for the AI in a box. So people, you <laughs> still have a chance to go uh, get in on that, get amongst it. Um, but just, out of formality, I have to ask you, uh, beyond all of this, what uh, is there stuff that we should be watching out for? What What's coming up next? Um, so we are going to be, um, you know, we're looking at doing new versions of the person sensor, mm. um, you know, coming up with, uh, at the moment, the person sensor is really focused on faces. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, so we're trying to, um, you know, expand that out so it does like full body. Um, you know, detection. So if even if somebody's like, you know, looking away, um, we'll actually be able to uh, hopefully spot them um, and do a lot more sort of person counting and uh, things like that. Um, I, I also, I, I'm just going to keep pushing on the speech to text and the AI in a box stuff. I think that there's so many really interesting things um, that we can hopefully enable with that. So um, you know, translation, um, all of these uh, different um, capabilities that are now out there in the open source world. Um, but by adding speech to text to the mix, you're actually able to make them a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Yes, cool. Um, all right, so uh, just to wrap up our tabs here. So we've got a bunch of links in the description of the video. If you found anything interesting, uh, there it'll almost certainly be linked below. Uh, we've got petewarden.com, your blog. We've got the <laughs> X or Twitter or whatever. We've got, um, oh, I even wanted to ask you about this, but uh, maybe maybe we'll have a minute. Um, UsefulSensors.com. We've got yes. AI in box, person sensor, tiny code reader. And each of these has links to where you can get it. So just uh, go there for the central hub. 
We've got the Build Together Inclusive Innovation Challenge that is open until November twenty or November thirtieth, twenty twenty three. No, uh, yeah. Uh, so you've got fifty three days to get a uh, get inspired, build something, and submit documentation. We've got all these projects already up for the Person Sensor uh, in the Useful Sensors uh, Hackster page. And then we've got, uh, you have this amazing GitHub with documentation, step files, all kinds of different stuff, including like uh, also your personal GitHub. I didn't even dig into that much with, um, <laughs> this is not the right one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. Just like open speech recording tools, uh, speech cat with that wonderful little gif of the, <laughs> the grinning cat. Anyway, anyway, I don't need to drone on about this. Um, lots of awesome stuff that you're doing. Any... Uh, thoughts to throw in there before we wrap up here no i mean we've covered so much uh, ground i'm just really it's it's so great working with the maker community i will say that it's it's really you know if i'm ever having a you know a, a tough day just going out and actually looking at the things that people are building with this stuff is enough to give me like a shot in the arm um so ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Bert. that's very that's very sweet <laughs> very kind um but i i really uh you know it's it's seeing this stuff being used by people out in the world that really um, makes my day so please uh keep keep building stuff keep sharing uh, i love to see it yeah thank you so much for joining us pete uh hack on it's it's what we say and it's always true Oh, are you going to play the thing? There we go. <laughs> Pete Warden, everybody!